Good morning, everyone. Uh, honored to be here. I'm looking forward to bringing you up to date on a number of opportunities that uh, we need to get into, but also I know for a fact that a lot of us have done an incredible amount of Indigenous development no matter where we are. Now, um, the cool thing I like is I look Indigenous. If you put braids on me and I turn sideways, I'll look like the logo for the Chicago Blackhawks. <laughs> and there are very, I, I am very proud of that, mainly, but my problem is if I grew my hair to get to braid length, I'd actually, it, it actually goes poofy, and I ended up looking like one of the Jackson Five. So, <laughs> one of the curses I have in my, in my life and my family. But uh, it's an honor to be here. Always great to be amongst my colleagues within the uh, CBTU and, uh, and awesome friends across the country. I'm a Teamster, and I'm proud to be a Teamster. And uh, when I was uh, working in Saskatchewan, I uh, was a UA member, um, um, never been in a trade um, at all, uh, but I know my community inside and out. And that's one of the reasons why I was hired for this position uh, over well, close to 12 years now. And uh, it's been my honor to develop opportunities no matter where I go. And so being able to link and bridge communities is, is, is my expertise. And I always look forward to that because of the opportunities. We are all responsible for our young people, no matter who they are, no matter where they come from. Every single one of us, we have that responsibility to look after our young people. Because right now, opioids, suicides, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what community we're from. We still have those harmful effects of gangs, prostitution, all kinds of negative lifestyles that are out there. The pandemic made that even much more worse because in many cases, a lot of our young people, especially our indigenous young people, spent many a time sitting in front of a gaming TV, smoking dope until the sun comes up. And so what do we do to bring in opportunities for our, our young people? We need to develop a little bit of a, what, I, what we call a path forward in Alberta a path forward to be able to ensure that young people start to develop a path to a career. On reserve, in many cases, our young people are told to be social workers, counselors, doctors, lawyers, on the, going to post-secondary education in, uh, in university. And my clicker doesn't work. I've seen... Uh, I seen uh, Oh, the, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just follow the directions on here, I guess. Yeah, it's, uh, we, when, when we look at a path forward, we always need to realize to get to steps to be successful, it has to begin with a path, some type of a path. And I would like to show just a, a short three-minute video if we can, if we can, uh, if I can cue the, the people at the back or who's ever in charge of this. When you're a kid, life is endless, you know? Life is limitless. We'd skate till 10 o'clock in the summer times. We'd bike till 10 o'clock, just running away from family. And I remember, uh, honestly, pretty much breaking the rules. I mean, it was a big lesson for me to, when you gotta be done something, you gotta be done. And, you know, there's a time when you gotta stop and, and uh, do what's right. I honestly didn't think I'd make it to, to today. I honestly, I didn't think I'd make it to 20. A lot of my friends growing up, just that whole like, mentality, you know? Just, they're bored, they have nothing to do, they have no guidance, what are they gonna do? And when they're lost and alone with no guidance, with no goals or anything, and you tell them every day, like, you're worthless, you're stupid, you're, you're nothing. You're facing pain every single day of your young life thinking you can never leave. This is life. This is what it's always going to be. So you want to numb it. You don't want to you don't want to live through that. You know, when I was at those parties, everyone was always trying to give me extra or or you know, go play this game, do this, you know, and something that's out of the ordinary. And I'm like, ah, that's not me. I don't need that in my life. You know, if you don't think I'm I'm cool and all that's cool, but I know you'll think I'm cool on the ice. 
I just didn't want to be a statistic, you know? It felt kind of like I left a lot of people behind and you get that guilt because there's nothing you can do. They need to want it and I wanted it. My brother wanted it, my mom wanted it. Taking it one step at a time is, is practical, it's real, and we can take big strides just having that philosophy in mind when it comes to helping our young people or helping our families. Just move forward, like there's so much to, in this life to live for and to experience that, you know, you don't, you don't need that extra, that extra distraction. Anyone ever, ever asks me about, why would you want to go into trades? Like, who showed you that? My mom, she was the strongest woman I've ever, ever met. Women like her paved the way for women like me to get into trades. The best things in life come from just helping people. You know, there's so many opportunities and so many jobs. You can be whoever you want. Houses on First Nations is currently unsustainable for 99% of First Nations. Let's think outside the box on how we can build 100 homes. Can I bring the trades opportunities as opposed to them going off the nation on the nation? And by the way, maybe we can build houses outside the reserve for other people. If I didn't play hockey, I think about like carpentry, like with my cousins. Like I don't see, I might be, even be a carpenter, probably, or a plumber, just having around, like you know, like my grandpa. Like, or heck, like I do that stuff for them all day if I wanted to. And, you know, I'd be with people I care about and get some work done. So I chose this. I chose this trade, I chose this life. I chose to associate myself with these people because I knew I could, I could do better. My path forward was hockey. My path forward is helping people. My path forward was the skilled trades. The commonality of those three people is the fact that all three of them are strong in their culture, traditions, and ceremonies when it comes to their home life. And more importantly, they have a strong parental support. On the other side of, of, of that world is an incredible amount of young people that don't have that. Call it intergenerational trauma, call the residential school um, system that caused a, a large impact in the way we deal with, with, with our young people nowadays. And they're lost. A lot of them are lost right now. And the traditional way we've dealt with our young people, I'm at that age, I'm 58 now, I'm at that age, I need to prepare myself to start to teach our young people to get ready for, for, the next, for their next role, which is adulthood. And we did that for thousands and thousands of years. That's what made us survive for thousands and thousands of years on, on Turtle Island in, in North America here. And so when we look at that, and we look at developing a path forward for our young people, what does that mean? It means sitting down with them, guiding them, taking the time to, all you gotta do is work for 10 months of the year, go to school for eight weeks, write a test, pass a test, become a second year apprentice. That's the beauty of our world when it comes to apprenticeship, to become a journey person in our trade. When we are able to help them develop that path forward, it gives them a, a steps to get there. But you know what, the, one of the difficult times, and we're, 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 we're messing with trying to develop different opportunities, is the whole retention side. And I'm the first person to tell you, our, our, our indigenous young people are very fickle, very fickle to the point where one day you'll see Johnny working. Next thing you know, he's disappeared. What the heck happened to Johnny? Where were you? He was just here. And, uh, and I, I hear examples, well, somebody's seen him walking down, down the road, going, walking home, because he just found out his mother passed away. We don't talk to people. We don't spend time telling people at work some of our issues and some of our problems because we, we don't want to cause trouble. We don't want to bring people forward because of racism. And like it or not, racism is still out there. And that's why I, 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 I talked the other night. We need you guys as allies to be able to fight those type of things, to make our place of work safe for everyone and an opportunity for them to feel good about being able to talk 
about everything and anything that they need to. Now, that is an ongoing opportunity for us to, to ensure that we develop strong retention strategies. And we're working in Alberta to be able to work with some, uh, some people that's going to be able to take elders, take people to the, to the workplace after hours to start spending time with those people that need a little bit of that, that, that retention help. Call it EAP, call it uh, um, some type of aftercare, um, but there needs to be not only the workplace being developed, but helping all of these workers develop opportunities to ensure that they find balance in their life. And uh, once they find that balance, and once they know people care about them and they want them there, they're going to stay there. They're going to stay there. I like that they start clicking because uh, they want me to keep moving here. <laughs> I thought I had control of this. Um, and of course, Indigenous awareness training, we're constantly uh, needing to do that. We're constantly needing to, to ensure that that education happens. And uh, the one thing we're, we're planning, our next phase of, of, ed, uh, of Indigenous awareness training needs to be um, educating members. Because I want uh, our, our members working beside our young Indigenous people, I want them to be brothers and sisters, to be able to say, I'm proud to be working beside you. But at the same time, I also want to thank you because the contractor's in Indigenous engagement plan has helped us get work on the union side. So I want to thank you. And we need to educate the people that, that work together. And of course, the, the, the one thing I love about uh, developing opportunities, the Paul Band in Alberta is in a unique situation where they have five power plants around them. And when I went to go visit that community, we, uh, Rob uh, Calver went to the, the treaty days and, uh, uh, and, and began to realize hardly anybody's working in those five power plants around, around the Paul Band. I said, what the heck? Why, why not? Why don't we have a bus drive, driving off the Paul Band to every single one of these five, uh, five power plants and, get, and getting our young people working? And so this is where community development needs to happen. And this picture, what I love about this picture, this picture is the group of eight different trades that decided to, in, in partnership with the Educational Partner uh, Foundation, and I want Barb to stand up, just give us a quick wave. In partnership with them, in partnership with them, they are able to make some free training for the, um, the junior high and the high school, where we have eight different triad trades. And the one picture there, the one side picture, a young girl, a young girl who doesn't even live in the community, heard about this program and said, you know what, I'm going to take this. And uh, I'm trying to figure out what trade I want to get into. She's in grade 12. And uh, Jay's, Jay's Bearhead is her name. And, and she has, 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 hasn't missed a day in the training that, that, that has happened because she wants to be a tradeswoman. She wants to be a tradesperson. She still doesn't know what she wants to be, but uh, to, on this day, she was working with the IBW in, in, in bu building a little lamp that has a, a cell phone holder. And, uh, um, and the one thing I, I love about her Whenever I, I, I go see a new trade that's, that's going to the, the, to the Paul Band, she's always happy to see me. And it's because I'm taking it upon myself to spend time with those young people to ensure that they are given an opportunity to, to be successful. And, uh, and it has to start at the junior and, and, and at the high school level. And so I, I, I commend the, the eight trades that are going to be working with uh, this community for the next 10 weeks. Yeah, we have COVID issues, but we're, we're working around it as well. And, uh, and we have to. The other uh, cool thing, I have a great team that I work with, uh, starting off with Terry Parker, our leader, our fearless leader, but I also want to introduce you to Rob Kelver. Um, a lot of people know him from the Iron Workers. He's developed a, a, an incredible amount of, uh, of, of uh, training that happened in the southern part of Alberta with the Iron Workers, bringing in a large amount of uh, uh, women into the, into, into the trades. Uh, Rob, stand up, all right? Um, but also, Tyler, our communications person, if he can stand up, you need people in your, in, your, in your community, in your province, in your region, to be able to, to, to be a team that can work together for the betterment of, of our young people. And, and these guys work so well. We work so well together. And, and of course, one of the things that we're going to be doing in the, in, in the near future, because 
Rob has the perfect face for, ra for radio. <laughs> I had to throw that. I had to throw that in. Sorry, Rob. But but the we are taking a, a radio show um, to all the, the indigenous radio stations that are in Alberta and talking, bringing in people like Jasmine Smith, who is now at the time of that uh, at the time of that video. She was a, a, an apprentice, and I'm proud to say today she's a, uh, a journey person, iron worker. Uh, and because we were going to start path forward uh, before the COVID hit, and then it hit, and it just stopped dead in its tracks. And the the one thing I'm proud about when it comes to Jasmine is that uh, we have it in our culture to to take on people in our life. And I'm I'm, I'm honored that uh, that Jasmine and and I develop a really close father-daughter relationship, and I, I traditionally adopted her as, as, as my daughter, and, uh, and I, I check up on her as often as I can, and that's, that's what we need to do for our next generation. But back to the radio, um, we have so many different topics that are going to be spending a great amount of time talking about uh, um, how do we get people into the trades, what, what trades can we, can, can we interview. Let's, let's, let's interview so many different people that we can, uh, that, so if somebody's listening to this on an indigenous radio station in Alberta on a First Nation, on uh, the 51 First Nations that are across uh, Alberta, be able to have them listen to us as to how their, their, their young people can get into uh, a construction trade. And of course, the constant outreach that, 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 we, that we need to make. I'm torn because I'm not, I don't like hanging out with the mucky mucks. Uh, and, 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 and the mucky mucks to, if, uh, is slang for the, the, the chiefs and all the, all the political people. I'd rather deal with the community people. And if you get an opportunity to deal with the community people, um, it's awesome. But you know what? Every once in a while I need to do that. And uh, finally made my first trip to Fort Mac and, uh, a couple weeks ago. And, and, and one of the things that always happens, oh, you're going to go to Fort Mac. That's a horrible, horrible place to be as a construction worker. But you know what? When it comes to my First Nations community, I, when I went up there and got to meet some of the people, I thought, wow, this is a, such a beautiful place up here. And so I bypass the attitude towards Fort, Fort Mac and look at the people that have always been there. And that's my First Nations brothers and sisters, and it's awesome. So I was able to spend time with Alan Adam, who, uh, uh, the chief uh, from, uh, from, from uh, the Athabasca First Nation in, in, in northern Alberta. And, uh, we sat down and we, we instantly became friends. And those type of relationships are important. But I like dealing with the people that deal with training at the community level. And it's, a, it's always a great opportunity to meet those people because they're passionate about helping our people. And they're the ones that are going to be able to ensure that there's opportunities for our young people to succeed. And of course, constant, um, um, you know, we've gone to Saddle Lake, gone to, took uh, Jasmine Smith to her home uh, community of Bagani, First Nation, and they were so proud of her when uh, they found out that uh, she's an iron worker, a journey person iron worker, and uh, knew that one of their own was part of the union world. And of course, constant outreach. We need to constantly do that. Every, we have to make, the problem I'm having, when I did this PowerPoint presentation, I could have added another 10 slides just in the amount of work that constantly comes to our table. And it's awesome. Every community I go to adds a great deal of amount of uh, work that ha has to happen um, uh, and follow up with that. But you know what? We are, we are excited to do the work and we are honored to be able to look at the opportunities. And I love the fact that our, our, our 16 trades and our 18 locals in, uh, in Alberta our uh, game to allow us to do what we need to do to develop the Indigenous community in Alberta. And I'm going to finish off by uh, also doing a poll question. So let's please uh, get to your uh, app. Would you be interested in learning more about getting started on Indigenous inclusion work in your local union and organization? Take a couple of seconds and pick the right one. Do you have any results yet? How come everybody else gets results? It's all they got is a question. 
<laughs> oh, there we go. 74% yes. You know what? Let's take the time. Let's take the time to, to find out who can help you and your local through Indigenous awareness training that we did through, uh, um, through our time in, 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 in COVID uh, hideaway. Uh, I was able to do a incredible amount of training and reach a number of people. I can reach people the same way. Uh, if, I, if we can't travel yet, I can still come to your community by, by Zoom to help. And uh, I'm a big believer in helping anybody and everybody whenever I can. And it's our responsibility to ensure that we develop locally. And if we, if we could do that together, I'd be more than willing to do that. Other than that, always a big honor to be a part of my friends. Always a part, uh, always proud to be amongst awesome people. And I want to I want to end off by just saying one simple thing. In the in, in in the in the theme of reconciliation, I want you to do one thing. We have about two three hundred people in here. Take one person under your wing, one indigenous person under your wing, and see what you can do to change their life. And you know what we'll do together? We'll change the world. And with that, an honor to be here. Hope and love, everyone, and uh, hope you guys have a rest uh, of an awesome convention, and uh, thank you very much.